Hi, I'm Dr. Stuart Miniker at the Palo Alto Medical Foundation Los Gatos Center. Welcome to Health Connections on KCAT Television. Today we're going to talk about urgent care, emergency room, and when you should go there as opposed to your regular primary care doctor's office. Join me in welcoming my two guests, Dr. Becky Law, who is one of our urgent care doctors at PAMF, and Dr. Kristen O'Sullivan, one of our pediatric urgent care doctors here. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start a little bit uh, with discussion of the kinds of things that you guys see in the urgent care. Let's start with you, Kristen. Why do parents bring their kids to the urgent care? We commonly see children in urgent care for complaints like fevers, cough, colds, uh, minor injuries, scrapes, or uh, minor broken bones. Uh, we also see children for things like head injuries and maybe mild exacerbations of some ongoing problems like mild asthma. And Becky, what sort of things do you see for adults who come to the urgent care? Um, we see fever, sore throat, ear, nose infection, difficulty breathing like mild to moderate asthma, sometimes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, urinary tract infection, which is very common in the female population, sometimes a small laceration, small cuts that require uh, suturing or uh, spraying or strain sometimes uh, back problems or uh, skin infection or eye irritation. I think my colleagues are being a little bit modest. One of the things that I really appreciate as a primary care doctor here at the Los Gatos Center is that our urgent care is very well equipped for high level of service to our patients. There are certainly things where patients should go to the emergency room instead of coming to the urgent care. Or when it comes to chronic illness, I always believe it's best for patients to see their primary care doctor. Sometimes it's very difficult for a doctor who's never met you before to help you with a chronic illness, even if it's getting a little worse. So when you're not having a serious life-threatening problem that requires treatment within 24 hours or less, it's best to make an appointment with your primary care doctor for follow-up. If you do need to go to the urgent care, let's learn a little bit more about some of the high-level services we have at Palo Alto Medical Foundation. So Becky, tell us more about some of the equipment, some of the testing, and what kinds of more serious problems do our patients have that we can take care of in the urgent care? I think the good thing is that we have a point of uh, care test here. We can uh, get the flu test, a strep throat, and uh, sometimes a urine sample to see if patients have a urinary tract infection. Those results will usually come back within an hour and to help us on the diagnosis. Sometimes for problems that need to go to the hospital, for example, like appendicitis, patient can come in with nausea, vomiting, severe abdominal pain, and uh, we'll order a CT scan to see what's going on in the abdomen, if we establish a diagnosis, we'll contact the doctor in the hospital and transfer patient over as needed. So we have CT scans, we have laboratory testing, other x-rays, uh, and these are available to our patients in the urgent care all of the hours the urgent care is open. And Kristen, how about for the little people? We have all the same services available. We frequently will get flu testing or RSV testing, which is another virus we commonly see in the winter time. Those are swabs that we can get from children. Strep throat testing as well as the urine testing, just as Dr. Lua had mentioned. Blood work can be obtained to check for infections and anemia, as well as the typical x-rays. If you're worried that your child broke their wrist or their ankle, we can get x-rays quite quickly, we'll review the x-rays ourselves, and then we'll have a radiologist review the x-rays within 24 hours, often that same day and within just a few hours. We can also have the CAT scan and ultrasound for, for our children as well. You know, I think that parents commonly worry a lot about fever. And I, I'm sure that both of you see a lot of patients with fever, especially kids. Can you tell me a little bit about how we decide if a fever is serious enough that a patient should come to the urgent care rather than going to see their primary care doctor. Absolutely. So small children, children, infants three months and under, we worry a little bit more about fever. Their immune systems are still developing. So the best way to check for fever is a rectal temperature in an infant. And you can go on our blog and check out how to do that, or I can tell you how to do that. But the temperature that we're looking for is 100.4 or higher. That's a fever in an infant. So if your child has, uh, is three months and under and has a fever of 100.4 or higher, they should come in and get seen that day. Children who are a little older, three months and older, who are doing well, they can have low-grade fevers, 100.4, 101, for a few days if they have mild cold symptoms. 
things like that. We would expect them to have fever for two or three days. If they're getting higher fevers or they have fevers without other symptoms for three or four days or more, they should probably come in and get checked. The best way to check temperatures in kids that are over one would be the ear thermometers or the otic thermometers after they're not tolerating those rectal th thermometers anymore. So we have good guidelines for what temperature levels are important for parents to bring their kids to the urgent care or to see their primary care doctor within 24 hours. But also important as parents to remember, trust your judgment. Most parents know if their kids are really sick. Uh, if your child is up and playing and eating normally, sleeping normally, acting normally, but has a low grade temperature, give it a little bit of time. And if it doesn't go away in two or three days, then check in with your primary care doctor. Obviously, if you have fevers high enough, like Dr. O'Sullivan just mentioned, or the child isn't acting normally, get in to see the doctor that day or come to the urgent care if nothing fits your regular schedule or it's a weekend or evening. Fever sometimes is a sign of troubles in older patients and particularly in the elderly, we worry about fever. So Becky, can you tell us a little bit about when we should be concerned about fever in adults and particularly in the elderly? Sometimes with elderly population, they're not really well in verbalizing how they are feeling or if they are having any pain or any other discomfort. So I would say for elderly patient, if you notice signs of confusion, uh, decreased appetite or decreased urination, um, then the, you should bring the elderly patient to the urgent care or contact their primary care uh, to see if there's any further suggestion by the doctor. And another thing that sometimes affects people's thinking, orientation, confusion, is concussion. I know a lot of our patients worry about those bumps and injuries to the head, possibility of concussion, both for adults and especially for our teen and younger athletes, and then for the little ones who fall. Mm -hmm. Most concussions I know as a family doctor aren't that serious, but there are some guidelines about when to see the doctor, when to come to the urgent care, when to go to the emergency room. So let's talk about that next. Who wants to start? Um, I can. Commonly, small children will take tumbles from small distances, maybe from just their height standing. As you're learning to walk and crawl, you bunk your head on many things, on tables and chairs, and those minor injuries can be taken care of at home typically. As long as your child looks like they're doing okay, they're happy and playful, they had no loss of consciousness, and if it was a really minor injury. You know, if you're worried, you should always come in and get checked. The signs for worry would be if a child had a significant fall. So if they took a tumble of three or more stairs, or if they fell off something that was more like three or four feet, like a table and then in, lar in bigger kids, if they had a head-to-head -head collision, say in football or on the playground, those kids may want to get evaluated in the next day. Things to look out for would be episodes of vomiting. Your child may have one episode of vomiting or so, uh, especially if they're very upset and crying. But if they have more than one episode, they should probably get evaluated in the emergency room. Loss of consciousness, when a child seems to be asleep for a few minutes or seconds after getting hit in the head, that would be a sign of concern as well. Other things to look out for would be neurologic changes. If they're a bigger person, they can say their head really hurts, they feel nauseous or dizzy, or maybe they have tingling or numbness in one of their, their arms or their legs, or if they're really just not acting themselves, then they should certainly be evaluated. That makes good sense. <laughs> Um, I would say for adult side, it's similar to the pediatric case. Uh, we see head injury, especially during the sports event. And the warning sign to watch for is severe headache, if they have change in the vision, if they feel nauseous, or if they continue to uh, throw up, and also if they feel any uh, neck pain, stiffness, numbness, tingling, then they should come in uh, to urgent care for an evaluation as well. Oftentimes when kids get hit in the head, they're hitting something like a table, and so they may have a laceration on their forehead or by their eye. That would be another reason to come in and get checked because we may have to close that with sutures or dermabond, like a liquid adhesive. Does everybody who has a concussion need a CAT scan? I know we can do CAT scans here, but do you do one on every patient? No, typically we don't. We would actually really like to avoid any dose of radiation if possible because CAT scans come with concerns. But if you do meet criteria, 
very specific criteria actually laid out by multiple studies that say that you were requiring it. Say you had loss of consciousness for several minutes, multiple episodes of vomiting, a severe mechanism of injury like a car accident or falling down multiple stairs, or any mental status or neurologic changes like if the child is having slurring speech or difficulty with seeing, then that would be an indication for a CAT scan. And we can do that here. So it sounds like a lot of those things that you're mentioning require a CAT scan sound to me like some of the things for which people should go to the emergency room. If uh, our patients don't have a lot of medical knowledge, they may come to the urgent care with some of these concerns. What do we do to help them out while they're here to support them and how do we take care of them if they really need to go to the emergency room? So if it's true emergency, when the patient come in, we try to stabilize patient, which means we try to normalize their heart rate by giving them medication. If their blood pressure is low, we can give them IV fluid to pump out their blood pressure, uh, give them medication to reduce the fever. And also uh, at the meantime, we'll contact the hospital and call the ambulance uh, to transfer patient directly to the hospital for uh, further care. We always try to make it a point to contact the physician that we're sending the, the patient to so that they can have a heads up and know what we did and what they should be expecting on the other side. So you guys here in the urgent care at Palo Alto Medical Foundation, you know the emergency room doctors? You talk to them? I do, on the phone, certainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. As a primary care doctor, I also know that our urgent care doctors are wonderful at communicating with me. So all of my patients who go to the urgent care, uh, they have notes from our urgent care doctors that get sent to me, and if something's really important that someone needs follow-up, they can make follow-up appointments with me. That works great for those of us who work here at Palo Alto Medical Foundation. How about patients who have primary care doctors who aren't part of PAMF? What do you guys do for that? Kristen. We commonly see that, especially for patients who come in in the evening or on the weekends when their primary care doctors aren't available. So we have a wonderful system in place to be able to send off notes and um, information to their primary care doctors. So knowing your primary care doctor's name, perhaps a phone number or fax number is always helpful, but we often have that information in our system anyway. So I send off a note and contact the doctor every time. So can anybody come to our urgent care? Yes, anybody can come. Well, as a primary care doctor, I work all day in the same couple of offices with patients who are pre-scheduled, and I know why they're coming before they get there. I have a chance to review their old records and uh, lab tests, those sorts of things. Obviously, I see some patients who make their appointments the same day. But for you guys, every patient is brand new every time they walk into the urgent care. Becky, tell me a little bit, if you would, about your day. So when a patient comes in, when they check in in the front desk, it will be asked, what's their chief complaint, which means what's their, the main reason that they want to be seen by a doctor. Then the nurse or medical assistant will check them in. They will measure their vital blood pressure, temperature, heart rate, and uh, they might take more history, ask more about uh, what's going on. Then for me, as a doctor, I'll go in, I'll ask what's going on, take medical history, do the physical exam, Exam, and oftentimes we can perform a point of care test. Very commonly in winter, we check for flu, strep test, and the urinary tract infection. We run a urine sample, and if it's needed, we order a lab test. We can check uh, how their electrolyte doing. Is there a signs of infection, anemia? How their liver is doing, and also if needed, we can order just X-ray or CT or uh, ultrasound. That sounds a lot different from when I first started medical practice. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of tests you can do here in the urgent care? We do, and a lot of them are quite quick turnaround times. So the strep test takes seven minutes, uh, which I think is pretty remarkable. That's the, great. The yeah. urine test is about five for the preliminary test. And then after that, the lab will look at it as well. A lot of our testing can be done, even blood testing can be done and have some results within an hour or so. Well, and I know you take care of kids, but how about the pregnancy test? <laughs> um, yes, the preg we have pregnancy tests here too, and those take just a few minutes as well. <laughs> Great. Yeah. 
There's blood testing as well as the urine testing. There are other services available here at the center in the evening and on weekends. Kristen, can you tell me a little bit about those? Sure, there are primary care doctors who are available in the evening some, some nights for pediatrics and for adult care. And you can have pre-scheduled appointments and well child checks completed at that time. Sometimes it's more convenient for your schedule to have physical done at six o'clock at night, which is a really nice uh, service that the pediatric doctors and adult doctors offer. And we're open every day of the year, right Becky? Yes, we're open every day of the year. So on holidays, when the primary care doctors may go on a break, the urgent care will still open. Becky, why would you want to work all the holidays and the weekends <laughs> and the evenings? How come you've chosen to be an urgent care doctor instead of internal medicine? I know by training, you're an internist. Yes. Uh, but you've also done lots of training in urgent care work. How did you make that choice? I think it's very challenging and fun to be an urgent care doctor because every patient is different. And also I like to do uh, procedures such as suturing and I feel very accomplished by doing the multiple uh, things. And also we see basically every problem from head to toe. I get to see a variety of cases. I think it's very rewarding as well. And how about you, Kristen? What made you decide to be an urgent care doctor rather than a general pediatrician? Well, I agree with Dr. Luo. It's a it's an interesting challenge. I came from three years working in an emergency room where I saw quite a varied um, array of issues. This is a great paradigm, the urgent care, where we can have patients who we follow, who we know, who may have urgent problems that they feel they're not able to take care of at home for a day and wait to see their primary care doctor, but instead we can take care of them. They don't have to necessarily wait for hours in the emergency room. We can have good communication among our doctors, which I think is a great service to the patients. And I enjoy not knowing what's going to walk in the door and being able to try and do procedures and, and take care of our, our, our patient population. It's like Christmas with every patient. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as a family doctor, working with these guys is absolutely wonderful. I know that my patients who can't get in to see me because my schedule is completely filled will get excellent care and also that I'll get excellent follow-up from them. They're really wonderful about sharing lab test results, their impressions and opinions about the problems patients come to the urgent care for, and also about making sure that appropriate follow-up is scheduled. These guys will make the appointment or have their staff in the urgent care make an appointment with me for follow-up. So if your child has a concussion, or if you come in with chest pain, but they say, no, it's not your heart, but you should see your regular doctor, you can walk out of the urgent care with an appointment with your primary care doctor here at PAMF. Sometimes they'll even leave messages and someone will call your non-PAMF primary care doctor the next day to help make sure you can get in more urgently. It's really a wonderful service. So Kristen, Becky, as a primary care doctor, I have the luxury of knowing a huge percent of my patients when I see them each day. And as you've said, it's a new th patient every time, almost every time. What can our patients do before they come to the urgent care to help you make sure that everything that needs to be done is taken care of? How can patients be good patients when they come to the urgent care? Well, in pediatrics, we actually have some pre-booked appointments. So if you are aware that your child has an earache and a fever and you want them seen, you can potentially actually call ahead and make an appointment. But understanding that if a more sick child comes in, we may have to take care of that child first. So I guess understanding in patience is the first part of urgent care because we never know what's going to come in. Okay. So Becky, tell us a little bit about how our staff helps decide which patients are the sickest and need to be seen first. Sure, so there are definitely signs that we worried about. For example, when, pe when patients have a fast heart rate, when they tell us that they cannot breathe, when they feel that they're going to faint pretty soon, or for any reason they're having severe pain, altered mental status, then in that case, the nurse and the medical assistant will bring the patient in, and uh, we as a physician will see the patient immediately. So we have staff who triage every patient who comes in the door. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today on Health Connections on KCAT Television. Here at the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, we have a wonderful urgent care. And I'd like to thank my guests for joining me for conversations about what kinds of troubles we can take care of at the urgent care. <laughs> Remember that everyone's welcome, whether you're a patient at the Palo Alto Medical Foundation or not. Also that our urgent care is open every weekday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m and on weekends and holidays from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. We'll do the best we can to take care of all of your needs, but if we can't take care of everything here, we'll make 
careful arrangements to get you over to the emergency room. We'll always make sure you get follow-up with your very own primary care doctor, whether it's a PAMF doctor or someone else in our community. We want to take good care of you and your family. So if you have questions, please feel free to contact us, contact your primary care doctor, or come visit us at the Los Gatos Center. Thanks again from Palo Alto Medical Foundation and KCAT Television.